What up, what up, what up? It is your girl, Raina Rea, or Raina Rayan, whatever you prefer to call me, as long as you call me something. You dig? You dig? Ho, ho, motherfucking ho. Merry me. Merry me. It is the jolliest of jolly holidays, where the Christmas spirit is upon us, sharing laughs, hugs, and fun, gifts, thoughtful things, and horror. Today we're gonna be reacting to some horror Christmas animations. I think I'm gonna start with the mall Santa Claus. <laughs> this video is from M MJV Animations. It is called The Mall Santa Claus, Christmas Horror Story Animated. Hopefully we don't have any ads. <laughs> so this story happened to me several years ago. This is the first time I'm sharing my story publicly in hopes it may help others who read it. At the time, I was a mother of a four-year-old daughter. Her name is Juniper and she is my entire life. The day of these events, my husband was at work, so I decided to do some Christmas shopping at the mall. On the way in, Juniper saw Santa sitting in the middle of the atrium and began jumping because I assumed she associated Santa with presents. We decided to get into line, even though it was long. We could get a picture and she could tell Santa what she wanted for Christmas. When it was finally Juniper's chance to sit on his lap, I immediately felt uncomfortable. So do I. I feel very uncomfortable. I didn't like the way he was Look at his motherfucking eyes. His eyes were big and looked as if though he had been on something. See, I wanted to say he looked like he was strung out. Oh, hi. But I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to be the one. I didn't want to be the one to say it. But she said it. I was thinking it. She sat there for a moment and told the man what she wanted as I watched, filled with anxiety. After about two minutes, he got her off his lap and winked goodbye to her and said Merry Christmas. Happy this ordeal was over, we did the little bit of shopping we had to do and pressed on through the day. While I was browsing around one of the clothing stores, I looked up and thought I noticed the mall Santa sitting outside of the store we were in. Not taking any chances, I grabbed Juniper and walked out of the other entrance of the store. After this is probably one of the first white women portrayed in any animation that actually listened to that gut instinct. Like, literally, immediately. Not, oh, I'm gonna give it a few tries, or it just seemed a little weird. No, she had that. You see that? Oh, it's on, go. And actually left, like. After a little while longer of shopping, we decided to get some lunch in the food court of the mall. I kept my eyes peeled because I just had mother's intuition I that thought something wasn't right. I was wrong. We were finishing our food and Literally, as we were about to get up, the mall Santa came over to our table. He walked right up to Juniper and said in a jolly Santa-like voice, Hey there, Juniper. Remember to be good so Santa can come and bring you lots of presents. She was so excited, and so were all the people around me. It's easy to say what you would do in that situation, but I just stood still. I thought freaking out my daughter and rushing her away from Santa would be a traumatizing event. So I grabbed her hand and told her it was time to go. She said goodbye to Santa and we left. That night at home I told my husband about the entire story. He was angry but agreed with my course of action. You talk about Santa look like he off something. Her husband looked like he off something too. Look at how big his eyes are dilated. He look hot. Oh, I'm off these mother drugs. I ain't dripping if a mother then. The next day, I woke up at about 8 a.m. My husband was already gone for work for the day. I happened to look outside and saw a strange blue car that I had never noticed parked outside my house. This didn't really bother me considering it could have been anyone, but it was just peculiar. At about 11 a.m., I looked out the window again and noticed the car was still in the exact same spot. Yeah. I made the choice to go out to my mailbox and okay. front of my Okay, but here's the thing. The car is right at the end of the driveway. Where I'm from, my neck of the woods, we don't tolerate that. Excuse me, roll your window down. Excuse me, you blocking my uh, driveway. Move your car, please, before I have the police come and tow it. Home and investigate the car. The car was empty, except for the passenger seat. There was a Santa hat on the seat. I tried not to jump to any conclusions, but... It was just starting to make too much sense in my head. 
I ran inside and called my husband. He said I was grasping at straws, but decided to come home anyway to make sure I was okay. I know that's right. At the end of the day, even if you don't believe me, just to be safe and sure. A couple of minutes later, my worst fear was realized. I looked out the window and saw the man in his car. It was the mall Santa, and he was taking a picture of my house with his cell phone. Once he saw me, he drove away, and he drove away so fast I couldn't get the license plate number. What you mean he drove away so fast you couldn't get the license plate? You were out there! There's no reason why you don't have the license plate! If you knew you felt funny and your spidey whitey senses was tingling, why didn't you go behind that car and take a picture of the plate? Because that's what I'm doing. You blocking my driveway, I'm taking a picture of your license. Minutes later, my husband came home and I explained what I saw. We called the authorities, but there really wasn't anything that could be done. I felt angry with myself that I looked at the car all morning and couldn't get a license plate number. It's not that you couldn't, it's that you didn't. Hold yourself accountable. My husband stayed home from work the next day just in case. At about noon, we walked around the house and noticed footprints outside of Juniper's window. Footprints in the snow that neither of us left. That night, I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was just waiting for something horrible to happen. My husband, Juniper, and I all decided to have a camp out in the living room so she could be with us all night. Shortly after midnight, my husband and I were alerted to the sound of a car. I were alerted to the sound of a car pulling up. It was the mall Santa car from the day before, and he was approaching the house with a giant bag in his hand. I called the police as my husband stalked him through the windows. The lights were off, so the mall Santa couldn't see us through the windows. He made his way all the way to Juniper's window. He started to tap on the windows, almost as if though he was trying to wake her up. My husband stood on the other side of the window, trying not to scare him away until the cops came. That's when we heard it. Hey Juniper, it's Zanna. Come take a ride in my sleigh and I'll show you the reindeer. Praying that the cops would show up any minute, I sat in a fetal position not knowing if this lunatic had a gun or any other weapon. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying if I am the man... I'm going outside and I'm beating that ass. Like, I mean, like. <laughs> he kept tapping and whispering. It's me, Santa. Finally, the cops showed up and when we heard the sirens out front, my husband jumped out the window and tackled the mall Santa. My husband yelled for the cops and the cops detained the man. He didn't have any weapons on him, but his car did have duct tape and rope. It gives me nightmares to this day, thinking of that horrible situation and what could have happened. My Christmas miracle is that my family is safe and my daughter didn't have to really experience any of the intense feelings my husband and I did over those couple of days. If you as a parent have instincts about the safety of your child, please follow them. If I would have just left the mall when I felt uneasy, I could have possibly avoided this entire series of events. See, it never lies, she ain't never lies. When you have a feeling, don't second guess it, don't question it. Always let's do it. You never know what could happen. Next video. Last year on Christmas Eve, I was working late. I'm 23. I work in New York City and commute home every day on the train. Since I'm one of the younger ones in the office, I got stuck with one of the worst shifts, so I wasn't able to get home until 5 o'clock. My family had already left a whole hour earlier to go to my cousin's house, so I had to drive alone. Damn. After having a quick snack before the half hour drive, I got back in my car and put my cousin's address into my phone. What you mean get back in the car? You got out of the car to eat and then got back in the car at night on Christmas Eve? When the hooligans are scoundreling? Halfway through the drive, it started snowing. 
I got to. What station is that? Is that the Christian um, alternative hip hop station? So get ready, get ready for your miracle, for your miracle. My cousin's house around six o'clock. It was snowing heavily by this point, and I just made it in time to catch everyone starting dinner. I brought all of my gifts inside and cheerfully said hey to everyone. I stayed until around 11 o'clock. The rest of my family left a little sooner. I stayed an extra half hour or so just to hang out before leaving myself. By the time I was leaving, the ground had accumulated at least two feet of snow, and it wasn't even done snowing. The drive home was nightmarish. The roads were hardly even plowed, and I had to drive under 20 miles per hour on most roads. Damn. The roads were completely dead at this point though, most likely because everyone was smart enough to go home before the snow accumulated. Dummy! <laughs> then that's your fault! If you was watching the, f the weather, you wouldn't be in this situation right now, now would you? Eventually I turned onto a main road that I'm sure would usually be bustling, but at 11.15 on Christmas Eve night, there wasn't a single car or a single light from a store. It was a ghost town. But then I did notice the flashing taillights of one car. It was parked on the side of the road, and the smoke seeping out from its exhaust with the taillights giving it a red tint. As I got closer, I realized there was somebody next to the car waving their hand in the air. I assumed something was wrong and they needed help. So, me being the good Samaritan I am, I pulled up- Oh, brother, here we go with that good Samaritan bullshit. What do we learn about the good- the good ones? They always get taken too early. Are you trying to be a good one? Or do you want to die? Behind the car. When I opened my door, the guy approached me immediately. Hell no, hell no, hell no, hell no. That exhaust coming out of that car was red. Red. That car is about to blow up. And you trying to help him? It's too late. His fate was already sealed as soon as the smoke turned red. This ain't no mother GTA. You can't just have the car be smoking and then tuck and roll and save yourself at the last minute. No, you're dead. You're done. You're gone. I'll throw a couple dollars to your uh, GoFundMe for your funeral, but outside of that, you know what I can do. <laughs> barely even giving me time to step out. He was an average sized man, probably 5'10, 180 pounds. He spoke in a very demanding voice, asking me if I know anything about fixing an engine. I told him I didn't know much about cars. And his clothes beat up. The guy responded very quickly to everything I said. He told me it's fine. He went inside of his car for a second, popped open his trunk, came back out and told me to just wait by the trunk for a second. I had no idea what he wanted me to do. I was really confused. He walked over to the front of his car and I heard him open the hood. I couldn't see anything he was doing since the trunk was blocking my view. A fool and a half. View, and the loud wind of the snowstorm overpowered any small noises he might have been making. I put my hand on the back of the car and leaned my body in anticipation, when suddenly I heard three or four quick and aggressive footsteps in the snow behind me before I was pushed into the trunk. I may not look like much strength wise, but these legs, my legs go dumb. Like they are strong as f and if you push me in the trunk, you better make sure your upper body can compete with my lower body because baby, I'm getting out of that trunk. The man tried to close the trunk on me, but I kicked my feet up in resistance and held it up. I was able to overpower him and kick the trunk open completely. As I took advantage of the few seconds I had to get out of the trunk, I took out my keys. He tried to grab me now and I dug my house key Damn. right into his neck. He fell to his knees and his scream echoed down the deserted street. I was in my car and halfway down the road before he could even get up from his knees. A little further down I called 911 and reported the guy. I came back in 10 minutes to find blue and red lights illuminating the windows of the deserted stores. The police held him until the ambulance arrived for him. I watched the whole thing and nothing ever felt better in my life. I got home safely half an hour later and told my family everything. I was still very shaken that Christmas, and this remains possibly the most horrific thing I've ever experienced. I'm not gonna lie, his family member that he told up was sitting on the couch, 
did not give a f about him. How am I gonna tell you I almost died tonight? My big grown, probably six foot, 200 plus pound ass almost got kidnapped and you sitting up here smiling like some funny. Ain't hey, funny? I almost died. You never, you would have never seen me again. But you still get your rocked. All right. That is the end of that animation. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like these, I'll keep them coming. If not, then we'll switch over to some different content. Also, make sure y'all putting down in the comments below what type of content y'all want to see me post. Cause right now I don't know, cause it's a new channel. So you let me know what you want to see and I'll provide. Thanks. Management. Anyways, y'all have a wonderful night. Mm. Oh, one question, one question. Who gonna pop me? Who is going to pop me? Oh, That's right. No freaking body. Have a good night.